So what's going on guys, it's JM, it's Speedboxing, make sure you subscribe to my channel before you click on to any of my videos, also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions in what I'm saying in any of my videos, it really does help me out if you guys could drop me a sub or two on my channel. So, heavyweight contender and world ranked heavyweight contender Dillian White says that he's very confident that he'll be able to knock out Joseph Parker in a fight. He's licking his lips at the thought of fighting Joseph Parker now because he watched Joseph Parker yesterday morning win a very dull 12 round unanimous decision against replacement opponent and the definition of a fringe contender Razvan Kajanu. Kajanu stepped in for Huey Fury. That's who Joseph Parker was meant to be facing but Fury pulled out of the fight with two weeks to go and he kind of left Joseph Parker holding his dick so he had to flow Kajanu in last minute. Kajuan, who's a guy who's sparred many rounds with Joseph Parker in the past. And you get that sometimes when two sparring partners fight each other in a professional fight. Because sometimes it can be fight fireworks. We've seen it on rare occasions, like when Sean Porter and Keith Furman fought. But most of the time, the fights can be very dull. And that's exactly what this fight was. Joseph Parker came out, tried to throw the kitchen sink, basically. At Kachanu, he tried to make a statement. That's what he said he was going to do, but he just couldn't do it. He didn't have the power to take out the very durable Kajanu. And yeah, he's a very limited opponent and it's lower opposition, but does it mean he hasn't got a good chin? Because you get that with some fighters like that. You could be fighting low level opposition and you could be a big puncher or seen as a quite big puncher. But sometimes. These journeymen and lower level guys are very durable and that's exactly what Razvan Kajanu looked like yesterday morning. Even though it was a bad performance by Parker, I still basically gave him every round. He was lucky that Razvan Kajanu was very, very limited because if he was in there with a top heavyweight and he fought like that, then pfft. Like if he would have fought his last fight against Andy Ruiz Jr., then Joseph Parker wouldn't be WBO heavyweight champion and the Ruiz would have been. But in this fight, it's like he didn't get up for it because he trained for weeks and weeks for Huey Fiore, building himself up for that fight. He was looking to really win that fight because it would have been a bit of a statement to the other heavyweights because Huey Fiore is his mandatory challenger, undefeated young fighter, cousin of unified, well, former unified heavyweight champion Tyson Fiore. And against Kajanu, it's like he didn't get up for it, so he looked to get the knockout early. And when he didn't get it, it's just like he coasted his way to a 12 round unanimous decision victory. I gave Kajanu one round, and that's being generous because the round he won could have easily been swung to Josie Parker. So, yeah, that's just a brief breakdown of the fight. But back to the Dillian White stuff. It could be interesting, Dillian White and Josie Parker. Both guys are about the same height, similar weight. Dillian White has very long arms, has longer arms than Joseph Parker, I think. And he's a lot more rangier than Joseph Parker. He likes to use his range to get his shots off Dillian White. Whereas Joseph Parker's got very good hand speed. And yeah, that could be a very interesting fight. I don't know who I'd favour in that fight. It depends on how Dillian White looks on June the 3rd against Marius Wack. I don't think Dillian White could KO Marius Wack because Marius Wack is a very durable heavyweight. But I'm telling you now, if Dillian White knocks out Marius Wack, then that's a big statement to the other heavyweights because no one knocks out Marius Wack. Vladimir Klitschko batted him five years ago. And I mean batted him. And Marius Wack didn't get stopped in that fight. He went the whole distance. Povetkin was beating him in the fight easily, convincing there, but he only got the stoppage victory because um, Wack pulled out with an injury in the fight. So, yeah, I want to see how Dillian White gets on against Marius Wack, and if he puts in a very good performance and even stops Marius Wack, then I think Dillian White's ready to fight somebody like Joseph Parker. And I think Joseph Parker would get up for a Dillian White fight because it'd be a bigger fight, it'd be a bigger build up. Like, did you not see the press conference between Joseph Parker and Razvan Kajanu? Where the fuck was that? 
It looked like it was in a shop. Like someone said it was a garage. It just it just looked so shockingly terrible. Like it just looked so tacky. And I know boxing's not the biggest thing in New Zealand. Joseph Parker is like the guy when it comes to boxing in New Zealand and that's it. But pfft, I'm telling you now, Joseph Parker needs to get on the road and start getting in these big fights away from New Zealand. I know New Zealand is his home and he wants to fight in front of his home fans. But I feel like Joseph Parker needs to be in big fights now. He's a world champion. He should be defending that world title against guys like Dillian White in their backyard. Maybe tra travelling to Dejounte Wilder's backyard to face him in a unification clash. Like This is very interesting because Joseph Parker definitely lived up to what people are saying to him about being the weakest heavyweight in the division because he didn't look very dangerous against Razvan Kajanu. And it's a shame really because Joseph Parker on his A-game is a very good fighter. And I think if he's in a right fight against the right opponent, a fight he can get up for, because he's a world champion now, he needs them fights. I think Joseph Parker can be dangerous for any heavyweight, but as long as he's fighting guys like Kajanu, then he's not really going to get the recognition somebody like an Anthony Joshua was getting right now. And he's not going to be held as a great champion. He's going to be held as a paper champion who only defends in his own country, stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to start rambling on that. It's JM at Sweetbox.